y'all will never believe what happened to me on the way to the boat motor market. Matthew, the master mechanic, hello. I'm on my way to the market. I found myself a starting motor. Wow. Okay, y'all, I've been working on this, okay? I didn't film a lot of it, because I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm pretty sure y'all don't want to watch me fiddle with this stuff. I mean, it would have been an hour-long video, and that's after the three hours of footage I'd have to cut down of me fiddling, shaking, putting back together, taking back apart, doing more research, who's a what's a yaza koozies. So, long story short, I was able to... <laughs> hook up the uh, starter. Not only did I hook up the starter, I'm pretty sure I have the rectifier correct, so I might be able to charge the battery with this sucker. Here's what we did. Y'all know we tried the stator. Uh, I don't know if I went over this. I'm pretty sure I did. I only had spark in one cylinder. And I did a couple simple tests. I checked my coils. I'm showing 250 ohms on each coil. I showed you guys in a previous video how to check for resistance in coils. Which is in spec, I believe spec is 2 to 500, 2 to 400, I believe. So both coils were showing good. So to only have spark in one cylinder indicates either a wire, a plug, something wrong with the charge coil, or the power pack. The problem is, if it's a power pack, I'd have to order a new one, which would have been okay. But I had the parts motor, the 28, y'all know that. Y'all just saw me swap the new uh, charge coil system. I did that so that the charge coil system from the old motor would match the power pack so I can input it all as one system. That motor literally is a huge donator because I got the starter, I got the solenoid, I got the wires, I hooked up the battery wires from that motor. Uh, this uh, wire, this red fuse setup, uh, didn't need a fuse. So if when you guys try to figure out if you can do this on your motor, you don't need the fuse. I just had it and I figured I'd use it. The charge pack, the coils, all from the 28 horsepower. The flywheel is from the 28 horsepower. I could have used my uh, my one, but it was just, it's so it's such it's so freaking ugly. I said no, it's, I'm not doing it. Uh, I will tell you this: I didn't torque this flywheel nut down. Uh, in any case, here's how we hooked it up. All right, now I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm not gonna repeat myself 100 times. I'm gonna try to explain what I did to see if you if it'll help you guys figure it out. So we flopped the systems around, okay? So that's easy enough. You basically you put the the mag plate, the bolts, and the stator assembly together, okay? Now you're gonna have wires coming out of of everything. What we did was we hooked a ground from the battery to the block. We took the power cable from the battery and we hooked that to the solenoid, which you're supposed to do. Okay, we also hooked up our start switch and all that other stuff. The starter power wire's here, and that's on the other side. So you got battery power. <laughs> Boy, you guys get deja vu yet. You got battery power into the starter power. Now, the tricky part was wiring the power pack and the start button. Whoop, <laughs> I forgot that I still got live power. <laughs> anyway, so our start button is connected. We There's two wires. One wire is here. It goes to the fuse, comes out of the fuse. Again, you don't need the fuse, so take the fuse out of it. You just got one wire, and we hooked it up to our main battery source. The other wire, because I have no idea where I put it, because even after doing it a hundred thousand times, I still again this is this is the stuff I edit, guys, because you know I just I don't remember. I I have to rely on research. It's not sinking in yet. I'm not trained in this perfection. So the other wire is obviously the, our power for the solenoid. Then we got our ground for the solenoid and, and what, what. So there, there's our start switch, power for the switch and power whoop, 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 to the battery. <laughs> okay. Now what did we do? What else did we do? That's our start switch. We hooked up our, gra our our kill switch wires, which you can't see. Kill switch wires. Oh, goodness. Okay, so the kill switch runs to the coil, 
Okay, we had to modify the coil pack because there's a couple extra wires here I didn't know about. You got the two for the coils, and then you got the ground, which goes right to the block. One of the kill switch wire goes right to the coil pack. The other kill switch wire is going to go right to ground. And I'm 99.9 point seven. This is where I hooked it up here. I grounded my solenoid to this this bolt here. I also grounded my kill switch to here. Uh, it doesn't run yet, so we don't know if the kill switch works, but we will find that out sooner than later. Now, let's move our way over to the rectifier. Okay, and let me tribute this old outboard, Brandon's Garage, uh, and Cody Bass. Uh, yeah, Cody Bass. Uh, they do a lot of work on these type of motors, the 35s, the 25s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s motors that have a rectifier that even if they don't, they have a start. They have a, a starter. They have uh, they have all of this stuff. I watched the watch their video 1600 times. A couple little intricacies that I wasn't picking up on. Uh, but now that I got it. Okay, so rectifier is, is easy enough. There's three wires that hook up that are here in it. And then what you do is you just take the same color coded wires, yellow with blue stripe, yellow straight, and yellow with whatever stripe, and hook them up together. The the only like X factor is the power lead. So we got a power lead which goes from the rectifier to here. Another wire is going to run underneath to the solenoid. And it's the same power switch to the battery that hooks up the start switch. Uh, if you all want to see it, it, it's under the motor. I routed it under the motor, and it's here. It's right here. So we got one rectifier wire here, and the idea is the power is supposed to regenerate back to the battery, to recharge the battery, kind of like an alternator. Okay, and then we have, that's basically it. So it's, it's the solenoid power to this. Okay, then we added our fuse. The only X, another X factor is this, this ground coil pack wire. Don't know what this is for, not sure. Don't need it yet because it, as of right now, it starts on the start switch. When it starts, it, it turns over on the start switch. Uh, and I just don't know if it runs yet to see if the kill switch is a, a problem. It might be a ground that is needed for, uh, to, for the rectifier to actually charge the battery. So we'll get to that uh, bridge when we cross it. What I want to show you guys is where we are at in this project. Okay, uh, We also link and sync the motor. Uh, I will go through that later if if this thing even gets up running. My main emphasis point of fact that I want to point out to you guys is finally now that we had a start, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna show it because it's fun. Okay. Not only do we have a starting motor, I tested for a compression, y'all. I'm actually gonna. Okay, I'm not gonna put the flash. I'm not gonna put the the light. It's still yellow. I'm working on the yellow tint. I don't know what's going on. Um, 155 each cylinder, okay? Comment below, let me see it. Have you ever seen an outboard? This outboard sat for 10 years. Have you ever seen any outboard brand new come out dry 155 a cylinder? It's an anomaly. Did I test it wrong? I don't know, three, four times I tested each cylinder. 155. It, it sounds like like the guy buy it new and put it in the basement, let it sit. I, I'm so confused with this motor, and I was so petrified of failure, and everything is so rusted and crappy. Do I have hope now? Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe that's the whatever. So, in any case, 155 is cylinder. So we got compression. We're showing spark in both cylinders. We got to add a little bit of fuel to this thing. We got to finish the lower unit, which I haven't started on yet. I hate to say, I, I might get lucky here, but we all know me. So anyway, uh, this is it. 82, 35 horsepower, pull slash electric start, non-controlled tiller motor. This will be the motor for the boat if it works perfect. It's a long shaft. Stick with me. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you. By the time this video comes out, we are going to be right there at 1,000. And I am so excited. We're going to do a fun 1,000. Trust me, guys. It, it's going to be stupid. You guys are going to be like, what a dope. But it's going to be fun. We're going to have a really fun 1,000 mark video uh, for someone like me to get to 1,000, which means literally nothing. It's just it's a cool milestone for me. I really like my channel, even though not many people do. 
Uh, I'm having a lot of fun, and everybody who stuck around with me, let's party. Let's get to a thousand. Thank you for enduring me. We will see you in the next video. Thank you.